Holy cow, do we have sound? I believe we do. This is me, John Park, and welcome to John Park's Workshop. Hey, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming in. I decided to start a couple minutes early because we've already got people uh, hopping into the chat and hopping in over on YouTube. So hello, 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 hello. Um, TY88 on uh, YouTube asks, speak you Dutch? I do not speak Dutch. I don't know if you're asking me or someone in the chat, but... Uh, <laughs> It gets cold in California. Not really. Matambale asks, does it get cold in California? Not really. I am wearing a shirt that's wool and a little thicker today because it was sort of cold in my workshop, but uh, no, it does not go. Well, California's a big state. It gets cold up north, but not down here. Not really. Um, but I am always cold. I don't mind the heat. I get cold quickly. I don't know why, because I grew up in a cold place in New York, but there you go. Uh, but enough about temperature. Hey, let's, uh, let's get this show going on the road, as they say, right? Um, so welcome. Uh, as you can see, we've got uh, a fun topic for today, synthesizer design tool. I'm very excited about this. Um, I swear there will be other topics other than synthesizers in our future, but this has been a very uh, synthesizer full and uh, sequencer full and MIDI full uh, month or two now, as we've been getting a lot of Trellis M4 projects uh, out there into the world. Um, and, uh, but the first thing I wanna mention is Help Wanted. If you are looking for work or are you looking to hire someone, check out jobs. Dot adafruit.com. Ooh, that's not what I thought it was going to be. Let's, let's, I can bring up a browser window. You're going to see a mazillion windows there, but this is the jobs board that's kind of creeping into place there. Uh, Jobs.adafruit.com. And uh, let me switch away from that before we get sucked into a black hole. Head there and you'll find uh, a lot of interesting job postings and you can post your own skill set if you're looking for work, contract work, full-time work, remote work, on-location work. And it's entirely free. It's free for everyone. So go check out jobs.adafruit.com. Uh, in other news, we are just about ready to launch Adabox 10. I'm going to be doing an unboxing next Wednesday night. Uh, what is that, the 17th? I think that's the 17th. Should I say that without being sure? I shouldn't. Let's, I'm going to open a calendar real quick. Let's see. Next, no, the 19th. So sorry. Uh, Wednesday, the 19th of December, I'm going to be doing the unboxing at uh, what is usually the Ask an Engineer time. Uh, and we are um, very excited that a lot of people have started getting them. We've shipped most of, I think, most of them have shipped, so you should be getting them if you haven't already gotten yours. Um, and you can, someone had asked me this, you can go and subscribe now for Adabox 11. So we're not taking subscriptions anymore for 10 but you can go and subscribe for 11. And as many of you know, the um, Ada box will end up in the store uh, a little later, but uh, I always recommend if you think that you're, you're gonna wanna get the cool new thing, the hot new Adafruit product, as well as extras, uh, sign up for Ada box because it is uh, offered at a discount over the usual prices and it's free shipping, so it's a good deal. And you get them. Um, 
If you're watching this show, uh, you probably know what's in the Ada box already, but if you don't want to know, go like this, plug your ears for a second, because I'm going to mention what is in it uh, very briefly, just so you know, because this, this drives the point home. It's one of these. Ooh, I just showed it. I hope you weren't watching. Uh, and uh, these have been hard to get, so uh, Adabox is a really good way to get whatever the hot new thing is. So go check it out, Adabox. Dot, uh, Adafruit.com slash Adabox will get you there. Uh, hey, how about a coupon code? If you want to go to the store and buy a bunch of stuff, throw it in your cart, anything other than software subscriptions or gift certificates, you can get 10% off with this coupon code for the week, which is Waveform. Waveform? Waveform. Use that coupon code in the store and you'll get 10% off. Um, I've got a lot of cool stuff I want to cover, so I'm going to try to move through some of our uh, opening business here quick, quickly. Um, Yannick asks, no need to resubscribe for 11, right? I don't know. I know you can subscribe to just uh, one. You can get them one at a time or a year. I think that's the case. Um, so maybe someone can correct me in the chat, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know what that answer was. But I think it's possible to do a year subscription or a month, uh, a single one quarter subscription. All right, product of the week. This is the product of the week, which is a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, I have one here somewhere. Oh, here's one. The reason I made this the product of the week is because you can make a retro pie for it that will run PlayStation 1 stuff. So uh, a Raspberry Pi 3, B or B+, plus, uh, as well as I believe the 3A+, plus, they'll all run PlayStation 1 stuff in emulation really nicely. And uh, the reason I bring it up is that the PlayStation Classic launched and... Um, a lot of people are not so happy with the game selection that is offered. Um, so if you want to get a RetroPie that you can put your own ROMs on for games that you have and have ripped, wink, wink, um, and use analog controllers, because apparently the PS Classic or PlayStation Classic only uses a um, digital controller with a D-pad. I don't think it has the, the analog control. Uh, so... I built a little Atari 2600 looking case, 3D printed case for mine, um, but I wanted to show there's a really cool uh, case I saw on Thingiverse that makes it look like a cute little PlayStation. Uh, and there are a bazillion of these, so if you go on to Thingiverse uh, or other 3D uh, model sharing sites for 3D printing, you can find them. You can buy them too. If you don't have a 3D printer, uh, I think $15 to $20 will buy you a pre-printed -pre case, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, so that's the product of the week, the Raspberry Pi 3 Model B+. Plus. Um, you can get away with the B, you can get away with the A+. Plus. You can maybe get away with some of the lower end models, but um, this one will ensure that you've got enough memory to uh, possibly even push the frame rates a little higher than, than default. So check it out. All right, guess what time it is. It's time for this. All right, I got to turn on the green screen on this thing. Where'd it go? This is a control, by the way, just that's built into, uh, there we go, turn on green screen. It's built right into make code. Uh, there's a little gear there to allow you to turn on a green screen or even uh, push the stream of a video camera right into it, like a webcam. Uh, so I'm kind of buried behind it here today, but uh, let me get this the rest, of the, uh, the rest of the way set up and then we will actually kick off our make code minute. Let's see. Let me let me find. Hey, there's one. Do I have enough cameras set up to do this? I sort of do. All right, we got a little bit of a weird setup today. Um, let me move this over to the side. Okay. So for today's make code minute, I wanted to talk about making choices with a bunch of um, conditions. So um, when we want to combine some different conditions so that we can, uh, in this case, choose different colors on our Circuit Playground Express by pressing combos of uh, the buttons, the A and B buttons, and the position of the switch, uh, the way we can do this is with these conditional blocks. So I have this large if-else statement, and then I have a variable called uh, switch state and another variable called button state. And so what I'm doing is when I move my switch left, 
it sets the switch state to zero. When I move the switch right, it sets the switch state to one. So you can see here, I'm moving the switch and it's actually changing the color based on the switch being moved. But since we're storing that variable in memory, I can also apply that to combinations. So now if I change uh, which button I've pressed and which switch uh, position I have, I'm gonna get four different states or four different colors with these multiple states combined. So you can see here, I can press the left button with the switch in the left position and get red. Right button gives me yellow. Then I'll flip the switch and now the left button is blue and the right button is purple. And so that is how you can set up multiple states with variables on the Circuit Playground Express inside of Make Code. All right, uh, yeah, I moved some cameras uh, positions or, or rather layer positions around inside of uh, Wirecast today to accommodate the stuff we're gonna be uh, doing in a moment. And that kind of screwed up where, where layers were. So it's a tiny little me over in the corner of the, uh, of the make code minute, but change is good. All right, so let me switch uh, back to, hello, that's me. And uh, let's see, what is next? I think, have we, uh, yeah, okay, so here is the main topic for, for the day. So uh, first, a little bit of a background. I am, one of the things I was really excited about with the Trellis M4 is that we were able to take some time and port the audio library from Teensy, written by Paul Stoffergen at PJRC. Uh, he has this tremendous audio library for doing uh, sound manipulation, for doing wave playback and, and uh, raw playback, for playing things off of SD cards on the Teensy, uh, as well as doing straight up synthesis of sound, mixing of sound uh, sources, effects, and so on. Um, so it's a really well-developed tool. It's by far and away the most popular uh, software library used on Arduino for people building DIY synthesizer projects and, and also synth controller projects uh, on the Teensy. And so we were able to get it ported over to uh, the Trellis M4, uh, and that is actually what is the backbone for most of the synthesis projects we've been doing and the sequencer and sampler that, that run inside of Arduino on Trellis M4. Those are all based on this great library and tool set that uh, Paul created. So one of the very, very um, uh, intuitive ways that you can get started building synthesizers using the audio design, uh, or rather the audio library, is this audio design uh, system tool. And I'm gonna switch my view over here for a second. So this is what the tool looks like. And what this is, is it's a front end for your uh, Arduino sketch in preparing the nodes that you wanna use, these different uh, calls to the audio library for things like uh, waveforms and effects uh, and mixers and inputs and outputs and, and so on. Uh, sort of diagramming those out in a GUI, a visual workspace and connecting them. So all the patching. Uh, you use this tool to create what is in, in a lot of ways the header for your Arduino sketch. So I kinda wanna take you through that process a little bit um, and give you some examples of the effects that you can get, uh, as well as um, show you a little introduction to some of these synthesizer concepts. So uh, let's see, how about we'll start with, uh, let's see, let's grab Adam here. And inside of Adam, this is just what I use for uh, coding my, my Arduino sketches. Inside of Adam, you can see uh, this is an Arduino sketch, uh, and this is a very simple one. All I'm doing is um, including the audio library, and then I have these uh, calls to the audio library that are um, creating little modules. So I'm using an audio synth tone sweep, so that's kind of like a little black box module that can sweep a, a tone up and down. You can specify some parameters. Uh, and then I'm creating an audio output, and I'm connecting them together. So these items, the tone sweep one, the audio output, uh, the patch cord one, and it connects tone sweep, uh, one of its outputs to the left input of the audio input and its other output, or actually the same output goes to the, uh, to the other, uh, to the right input. So all of that I created over here in this, let me pop this up here. Whoops, that's not me, hello. 
uh, in this audio design tool. So let me switch over to that uh, window. And this is just running inside of a browser. So I happen to have it inside of Chrome right now. So uh, you can see here, it is, um, it's also the documentation for the nodes, which is really helpful. Let me get that sized a little better. Uh, so you can see here, when I pick something like this tone sweep, uh, it gives me the information about it, its name, which you can change, a uh, summary of what it does, which connections it has, and then these are the functions that you can call uh, for this uh, item. So here, when I, let's, let's do one from scratch. If I look over in the left here, these are all the possible nodes. So uh, tone sweep, I think, is in the synthesis. Yeah, so here I am. I would drag in a tone sweep, and then I need an audio output. Um, so I'll go down to the output section. Where'd you go, output section? And grab, I think this one is the DAC stereo. I just happened to rename it in mine. Um, so those items I then can connect just with these little noodles. And then export gives you a code snippet to copy and paste over into your Arduino sketch. So we'll get rid of, rid of that one and let's actually do it. So we'll export. I only need one set. Uh, for Teensy, you would usually grab the whole little code snippet because it has some other library calls that we actually don't need uh, on Trellis. So I'm just going to grab this part that says GUI tool begin, GUI tool end. I know that's a little small, but you can probably see a little bigger here. So here I would go. I would paste it in. If I make changes, I would just paste over this section. Um, so now the rest of this is a fairly simple Arduino sketch that just runs that tone sweep. Uh, until it is done and then uh, runs it in reverse, I believe. Is that right? I may have made that. Yeah, reverse the sweep. Um, so over here, let me bring up an Arduino window for you. So there's a lot of window switching today. There is, uh, there's the sketch inside of Arduino. I've got my, let's put this here. I've got my um, Trellis M4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click the reset on it. So I'm going to do a video to make some of this stuff clearer. Uh, but right now it's running an Arduino sketch, so it's this purple color. And I'm going to double click or double click reset. It went green. That means that it is in bootloader mode, waiting for this Arduino sketch to be uploaded to it. Uh, and then in Arduino, I've got a couple things plugged in, so I'm going to make sure that I'm using the trellis. And then I'm going to compile and upload uh, to the board. So you should see that'll switch to purple. Uh, when it has finished getting this code. And you can see I'm using a verbose um, output. Can you see that or did I pull up the wrong one? I think you could see that. Uh, so there you can hear, it's doing this tone sweep. I've just got a little amplifier this is plugged into. Kind of funky sci-fi sweep. And it's just playing once, just to not be annoying. Um, so that is sort of the most basic of connecting, making connection side of the audio design tool. Um, and then some of these other sketches that I've got, uh, if we, let me turn this. Oh, a little note, you can just go into bootloader mode if you kind of want to stop the sketch, then it's not going to run. It's going to hang there in bootloader mode. And I'm doing that just because I'm hearing a little bit of um, audio hiss once that uh, part of the board gets lit up. Uh, so some other examples here. So I'm writing a guide that will show you how to use these kind of building blocks to build your synth. Um, I'm also going to recommend the uh, workshop that Paul did at Super Conference a couple years ago. He did great documentation. There's videos. There's also a video set that Alex Glow did. And there's a tremendous PDF that uh, walks you through it. And some things need to be changed a little bit to work on the Trellis M4. So I'm going to hit some of those uh, topics for you. So the next one here is a hardware test. So um, I'm just going to upload that to my uh, trellis. It's in bootloader mode. I'm going to go over to Arduino. You won't see this change, um, but I'm just going to push that code to it. Uh, so the code that's going on there now, let's uh, come back to uh, Adam here. This code is similar, except now you can see I'm also importing uh, the sensor and the ADXL libraries. That's what allows us to use the analog devices um, ADXL343 as a tilt sensor. 
and then the NeoTrellis library, so that's going to allow us to read button presses and light up the NeoPixels. Um, so the idea behind this one is I think I've got, this one is just going to be beeping, uh, an annoying beep. <laughs> there it goes, let me turn that down. It's periodically uh, beeping, and then while it's doing that, I can still uh, press buttons, and if I open up a serial monitor, oh, one got stuck, uh, I'll see the output of my accelerometer. So uh, not an exciting demo for you here right now, but it uh, is something that'll be helpful as you're starting to build synthesizers and want to be able to access the buttons and uh, the uh, accelerometer as you're working. So let's see, the next one I've got here is gonna take that pitch, but now it's gonna be controlled by the accelerometer. So again, I'm gonna just go into uh, bootloader mode. And by the way, I'm gonna publish, I made a little, um, 3D printed reset button add-on for the Trellis M4 that allows you to access it without putting uh, a pen or a, an LED that's something Katni came up with is I think a five millimeter LED works really well as a reset. Um, just because it's hidden back there behind the acrylic. Uh, there are pros and cons. If you do leave this button on there, it's kind of easy I found to accidentally press it when you don't mean to, especially if you're playing it like a little handheld synth. So um, be careful if you leave yours on there or maybe I'll design a short version that's a little harder to get at, um, but still easier than the buried one. Okay, so I've reset, and I'm going to go ahead and upload the next sketch, which is uh, going to be playing a waveform, and uh, it's the same setup, essentially, in the audio system design tool. It's just uh, I have a waveform going into an audio input instead of that tone sweep. Uh, I can show you that, actually, while this uploads. Let's go to... Audio system design tool. Hello, that's me. Where did it go? Come back, there you are. So that one just looks like this. So here I have this waveform and it just outputs the same uh, waveform output to both channels of the, uh, the DAC. And if you look in the notes on the waveform, it'll show you it's got a bunch of different uh, waveforms it can use. So it can output a sine wave, which is a smooth, uh, tone with no harmonics, just the fundamental. And then everything gets uh, richer from there. So a sawtooth wave, which is buzzy and has lots of harmonics. Uh, square wave, you can do a pulse, you can do a sample and hold. Uh, triangle wave, which is just a little harder sounding than the sign, uh, and so on. So what I'm doing on this sketch is I, I uh, if you look at the code here, and let's see, I'm going to zoom this up a bit for you as well. How's that look? I think you can see that, okay. Um, I bring in the audio system design tool nodes and connect them with the little patch cables. And then in my uh, setup, I'm making this call waveform one begin and I'm calling it a uh, type sawtooth, waveform sawtooth. So that's where you can pick which type it is. Uh, and that's actually something that you can change with buttons or accelerometer as well. Um, Yannick's asking, does the Neotrellis support CircuitPython? The Neotrellis, uh, both Neotrellis and, and uh, the Trellis M4 do, um, but not for the audio system design tool. This is an Arduino port. Uh, okay, so let's come back to a view of this one. Hey, that's too many me's. And I've got now, we, we should hear, if I turn up the volume, so now we're just playing that sawtooth wave. And so I'm accessing the accelerometer to change. It's a little loud. That pitch. Um, so you can see it's actually pretty straightforward. And when you look at this code, you'll see it's, um, there are a lot of ways to do it, um, but it's pretty straightforward to have things happening while you're still checking for button presses and accelerometer without delay and without interrupts. Um, it works quite easily. So let's see, the next example I wanted to show is the mixer. Okay, so let's uh, stop the tone there <laughs> and let's have a look again at the audio design tool. And now what I'm doing is uh, I'm introducing this, here we go. Uh, I'm introducing this mixer node, and it's a four-channel mixer. Uh, so what I have is, again, that waveform node that we just saw running into the first channel of the mixer. Uh, and then I have pink noise, uh, which is like a 
kind of noise sound running into the second channel of the mixer. And the mixer, if we look at its um, little help, will show you that you have a zero to one value that you can turn up and down for each channel of the mixer. So typically you'd set them at, if we're using all four of them, you'd set them maybe each to a quarter, 0.25, uh, and then that summed uh, mix of audio goes out to the DAC. Um, so what I'm doing instead is I'm setting the waveform at a constant and I have the pink noise coming in and out depending on the tilt. So I'm going to go back over to Arduino and I'm going to upload that to the board. I'll turn my sound back up and what we should hear is a tone as well as the pink noise. And I'm still using left right tilt for the pitch of the tone and then I'm going to use forward back tilt uh, for the mixer. So here you can hear the So there comes the noise. So great for your noise performances. Uh, and let's see, next one I wanna show is, so that was Mixer, uh, Mix 4. Okay, so before we do this one actually, uh, let, me tr let me reset this one. I'm gonna head over to the workbench for a second just cause I feel weird if I don't go to the workbench at all. Uh, and, Let's see, where's the down shooter? Okay, so what I have over here, this is again the, um, you may have seen this one before. This is kind of an all-in-one uh, classic style synthesizer. It's based on a, a Moog and it's called the System D from Behringer. And um, what this one does, actually let me make that the big view for you. And make that the small one. Um, what I've got, so, so this is an all-in-one synthesizer. What it has, though, that I thought was interesting, it's got it, three different oscillators on it. And so what I'm going to do is have it just play a single, sort of, it'll sound like a single tone. And I'm just playing it through some little speakers here. Okay, so what this is is a triangle uh, tone, and if I... Zoom in pretty close here, you'll see. Uh, so these are waveform selectors. And so this first one right now is this triangle, and then here's some different waveforms. So there's sort of a notched uh, saw. Here's a saw. So you can hear they go through and have increasingly rich harmonics. Um, if I turn the volume of that down, this is this is acting like our mixer. So think about in the audio design tool I was just showing, if we have, let's say, three waveforms going into that mixer, here's the three mixer knobs. So if I turn the first one down and the second one up, it's a slightly detuned saw. And here's a little pulse wave. And now I'll mix them together. Okay, so um, now what I want to show you is the same sort of thing happening on the audio system design tool. And in fact, you'll notice this one has three oscillators. Um, and it's, there's a way to sort of fake uh, a fourth oscillator, I think, on this one by pushing the LFO to audio rates. But um, really, that's the limit of it. And what you'll notice on, uh, no big surprise, on software over in the audio system design tool, um, the only limit is memory. And we've got a lot of it on the M4. So... Um, the ability to add a bunch of oscillators and then use multiple mixers is, is kind of a tempting and fun thing to play around with. So um, let's, let's have a look now at the audio system design tool with these multiple oscillators set up or multiple waveform. They're kind of interchangeable the way I'm using them. Um, and so actually I'm not using this envelope, so let's delete that. Um, and so here you can see I've got this one waveform node, I've just named it differently depending on how I'm planning on using it. So I've got, um, whoops, I've got a triangle, a sine wave, a sawtooth, and a square all going into a mixer. Um, this could go straight into the audio output actually, so it really should look like this. I was fooling around with adding an envelope to it. Um, so that's the code that I would export. That little snippet would come over here to our um, mix four. This is the sketch I'm using. Uh, and so you can see the, the little header that I'm grabbing, the GUI code is a little bit bigger here just because I had more patches involved, more, more nodes and more patches. Um, and 
let me remember. Okay, the way I'm using this is I'm just playing a tone, um, but depending on which of the four buttons I press on the trellis, buttons zero through three, it's going to switch that mix. So it's just like the knob I was just turning over on the Behringer. Uh, if we look here in the code, I've got the mixer gain um, laid out as these settings. And this is not the neatest way you could do it, not optimized, but I think it's clear. I just have four mixer settings, and in the first mixer setting, uh, knob one is fully on, the others are off. The next one I get half of the two middles, then I get the first one and the fourth one, and then I get a little bit of all four. Um, so that's just like mixing those three oscillators I did over there. So let's um, put that code on here. Which one is that? It's called mix four. Um, and so I'm gonna double click, and I know we're running low on time, so I'm gonna move quick, uh, as quick as it'll let me. And so let's hide that guy there. Uh, I'll turn this up so we should hear it once it starts. And someone had asked, is this leading up to the um, step sequencer? The, yeah, the step sequencer, uh, Dean wrote that and used a lot of this uh, audio design tool to get the sounds um, going as well as sampling. So here you can hear, this is the triangle wave. It's kind of low tone. Now I'm gonna hit the second button. And now I've got like the sawtooth and the triangle, I think. And there's a mix of all four of them. Let me hold that up where you can see it. Okay, so that's just playing one straight tone, but we're um, using the mixer to decide which one or how much of those we hear. Uh, and then finally, um, I want to do a quick demo back over there. So let's let's switch over to this camera real quick. Um, and what I want to show you is in the final uh, example, what I'm going to do is a few things. So I've got multiple waveforms. I've got the mixer. Um, I've got some filters or effects rather. Um, so I'm going to have like a chorusing effect and a flanger effect. And these are just kind of neat audio effects um, based on guitar pedals and, and other gear, um, tape loops and things like that. Uh, and then the other sort of new concept is this concept of attack, decay, sustain, release envelope. So an envelope is what is the um, loudness curve of hitting a note sound like. So if I um, play on, let's do... So here you can... What you hear right now is a moderately um, strong attack and a moderately soft release of that sound. Here's if I make it a really hard attack and get rid of that sustain or decay in this one. This one has a ADS. So now if we uh, bring in a soft attack, we get these kind of more lush pad type of sounds. And we can also ramp out of that. Okay, so that's how, um, that's kind of a nice and quick, I think, way to um, hear and, and visualize a little bit what the envelope sounds like. And so you'll see in this final example, if we come over here, uh, in the design tool, I've got this one. So it's gotten a little bit bigger. Um, we can zoom in. So you can see I've got, again, four waves. So those are the four oscillators. They each go into an envelope, uh, which allows me to adjust the, this is actually uh, attack, hold, decay, sustain, and release. It's a, it's a five stage envelope. Um, and so I'm gonna set those individually, uh, differently depending on which of these oscillators I'm using. And then you can see I've added a, a few effects. I've got a flanger coming on the second row, a chorus on the third one, and a multi-tap delay on the fourth one. And then I'm using some mixers to kind of bring this all together. Um, if you look at my code for this, let me switch you over to Adam. Uh, here you can see, again, I've got a nice big uh, collection of header code to get from the GUI tool. Those are all those connections, the patches and the nodes being built. Um, and then you can see here I've got different uh, envelope settings per row. So what I'm using is, uh, let me switch over to 
where you can see me again. Um, what I'm using is the top row is eight notes, uh, the white keys on a piano, essentially major keys. Um, and they are each their own separate oscillator, so we can make them play chords with the different oscillators. Uh, and so each of them attack differently. So let's, let's upload that code to the trellis. Uh, so I'm going to Arduino for the last time. And this one I do have up so you should be able to see it. And let's make sure that I've got the right port picked. I do. Okay, upload that code. You can see it compiles it. Uh, compiled quick because I previously compiled it without changing anything, so it didn't have much to grab. Uh, now it's searching for the trellis. It has found it, and it is pushing the code up there. Okay, so it's there, and now uh, <clears throat> let's just go have a look at this, and i got to watch the volume. Okay, so the first row is a sign, I think. And I have this soft attack and a long release. And the next one... You can hear it has a sharp attack, it has a soft release, but it also has this flanger effect going on. It's a richer waveform. Next one... I've got this uh, chorusing effect, I think. Is that what I put on there? I think that's the chorus. Yeah. Um, And these kind of sound nice mixed together. And then the last one I've got this little delay on. So you can hear when I press it, I'm getting um, sort of a second attack on the note. All right, and so that is... Um, a pretty straightforward way to build a synthesizer on the Trellis M4 using the incredible audio library. Paul Stoffergen, thank you so much for this. Uh, also, thank you to uh, Adafruit for porting it over to the Trellis M4. It makes uh, it really fun to work with just because we got all these buttons and accelerometer uh, ready to go, excuse me, built onto it. Um, and that just sort of scratches the surface of what you can do with it. But uh, I really like the... Um, uh, sort of paradigm of building the patch and the nodes in a GUI. So I think that way and it feels a little more like patching together actual gear. Um, and uh, uh, someone asked, is a scale uh, or chromatic? I have this just as a C major scale on here right now, but you can specify anything. If you look in the code at the top, all I'm using uh, is this little pair of... Um, uh, lists or arrays that are uh, I have, a, that have them in two different octaves, but uh, you could set that to anything you want, and you can get uh, much more creative with it musically. If you look at things like Collins' arpeggiator that he wrote, um, a lot of really cool stuff you can do that makes it uh, great to play. Uh, it makes it hard to sound bad if you're not a keyboard player. I'm not a keyboard player, but I like uh, things like this that make it a little easier. Um, so that is it. I'm sorry we've run over a little bit. Um, Someone asked uh, FX Music. Yeah, let's take a couple couple questions in the chat. Thank you, everyone, for stopping by, first of all. Um, is this in scale or chromatic? Oh, you asked that. Is this all about audio synth? Is there a way to get USB MIDI in and MIDI clock to sync with other MIDI gear? Um, I don't think we've explored it, but I believe you can using the audio um, design tool because I've done it on a Teensy before. So I think there's a good chance, and what I would do is, is probably go check the forums over on PJRC uh, and look at the millions and millions of great MIDI projects using Teensy and audio library. Should, you should be able to use that, yeah. Um, we're working on it right now on um, CircuitPython. Uh, a, a lot of the MIDI stuff is being... Um, developed uh, sort of from scratch. Our, our good uh, people on the CircuitPython team, thank you so much for working on that. Uh, it's a lot of work to, to rewrite the, uh, what is it, tiny USB from scratch on it, or implement it from scratch. Um, all right, well, oh, so we have a question, Adam L. in YouTube chat. Not sure if this is uh, for this, but the 16-step sequencer for the trellis is continuously crashing for me. Oh, no. Uh, there's distorted audio and it keeps activating. Welcome to Adabox 10, followed by screeching. That sounds bad. Um, what I would do, Adam, is 
probably make sure you don't have a welcome.wave or any other wave files in the um, root of the device when you go over to circuit python mode kind of clear that out uh, or maybe even sort of re uh, reflash it with the bootloader uh, and then put on um, the uh, Arduino sketch, but you want to try to avoid having too many libraries in there if the memory is getting full. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's any other advice for that, but it so sounds to me like maybe something has gotten uh, a little confused or over, uh, over usage of memory on the device. Because I've used the 16-step sequencer a lot and I haven't had problems other than audio files that I had already put on inside of uh, CircuitPython programs were showing up in my slots for the sampler section. So I know that that can happen. Um, check the forums too, because we may have better advice than the stuff I just attempted to mumble through on that. But I, I, I hope you can find some resolution to that. Otherwise, um, go to Discord and ask on project help or head on over to the forums.afruit.com. Um, yes, David Smith, that's a good, good advice. Ask people on the Discord channel. All right, well, that's all the time we've got. I know that we're a little bit over, but thank you for uh, hanging out and listening to the uh, fun uh, synthy stuff going on here. Oh, now I've done it. I'm grounding this thing. Uh, I will see you hopefully Wednesday night. If you want to stop by for the Ask an Engineer time slot, I will be doing the unboxing of AdaBox 10. Uh, and it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you tune in. So uh, last thing is I'll just remind you if you want to go to the store and get some good stuff, there's your 10% off coupon for the day, Waveform. Put that in the box, you'll get a nice discount. Uh, that is all and uh, I will leave you with some uh, synthy music. Thanks everyone and I'll see you next time.